Hey everyone, I hope you're well. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, my name is Seppi, and today, as promised on my Instagram, I'm gonna be filming a very juicy life update catch up with me. I feel like I haven't sat down and just spoken to the camera and given a life update since like last year. And when I did it last year, I had like a little McDonald's mukbang and I kind of sat down, spoke to you guys about like what I wanted from the year and stuff, and I feel like even though I love creating content for you guys, like it's like an absolute dream, I also love looking back on my own content and just seeing where I've come with my life. Like YouTube is just a little bit of a time capsule for me. So I feel like it's nice to do these Q and A's. And you guys have asked me some super juicy questions and I'm more than happy to spill the tea. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started answering them. If you guys wanna not miss out on my next Q and A opportunity, don't forget to check out my Instagram. It is Persian Bunny and my TikTok is Persian underscore bunny and my snap is Seppi Samoy. Okay, so the first juicy question is when was the last time you fancied a guy? Um this is kind of awkward, but you know what? I just I feel like I hate it when you click on a QA and they just don't answer the juicy ones, so I'm gonna answer the juicy ones for you. Last time I liked a guy was in April and we kind of spoke and dated for a bit. We're not going out anymore, but he's a really lovely guy and he's worth me saying that he was the last guy I fancied. Um, next question says, ooh, a lot of like dating stuff. Are you dating right now? No, I'm not seeing anyone right now. Um, have I been asked out though is another question. I have been asked out and maybe like, maybe I'm ready to start dating, I don't know, I'll see. But for now, I'm still just, you know, single, living my best life and just kind of figuring out, you know, what my goals are and like, yeah, just trying to get my, you know, trying to be like the best me first before I start dating again. Not for anyone else, but for me. I don't know if that even makes sense, but yeah. These questions are making me hot and sweaty. <laughs> Next question is, how is life as a doctor? And loads of questions are asking how I'm finding my F2 job. So those of you guys who didn't see on my Instagram, I am now officially an F2 doctor. I finished my first year as a junior and it was actually incredible. Like being a doctor, I can't lie to you, something that could not be better suited for me personally. I can't imagine myself doing anything else. I just like that it's kind of really challenging um, and I like how much it pushes me. I know some people want, want a job that's maybe a bit more like relaxed and like they can kind of go at a certain pace, etc. But I like a job that's like really like it pushes me hard and like I have to really grind for it and then I feel like really rewarded and I feel that with medicine and also it's just so rewarding to see um, people just so grateful for what you do. Um, for them and them getting better and just I don't know I think it's really incredible and I think it was such a big year to become a doctor like working in the pandemic um, working on COVID wards and um, having that experience I think is in a way it's obviously a huge curse but also a huge blessing someone has asked how much do you make a month from your NHS job and aesthetic clinic Ooh la la. So from my NHS job, I earn roughly £2,200 £2, a month. It varies every month because it varies on how many on-calls you do, how many night shifts you do. Like basically, um, they call it like, oh, I forgot what it's called, but it's um, unsociable hours. So it depends on that, but it's roughly about £2,200 a month and that's before your pension. And that's as an F1. I haven't had my F2 salary yet, but when I do get that, I will definitely let you guys know because I'm very transparent about that. I mean, you can Google these salaries. I don't know why people hide it. As for my aesthetic clinic, I do earn much more um, from it, as in I could earn what I make in a whole month from my other job in a day very easily. Um, depending on what procedures we do and how many clients we see. But it's just two different ball games of medicine as well. The hospital medicine that you do is very like acute stuff, people are very unwell and um, they're very sick and then you hopefully get them back to feeling much better whereas in aesthetic clinic, um, majority of people come in to see you are basically um, healthy or you know relatively healthy and they want something, um, a treatment to um, maybe fix something like an old scar or hair thinning and it's mainly um, 
like it says on the tin, an aesthetic procedure, but it actually builds on the confidence and the mental health of the patient that you're working with. And there's a lot of managing expectations. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff to include. And also with the aesthetic clinic, you have to remember the cost of insuring yourself as a private practitioner, the rent that you pay, um, any money that you pay for advertising. Um, obviously, I get a lot of advertising from our Instagram page and Sol and I both being influencers, if you would call us this well I hope you would call us this with the YouTube and Instagram channel that we run but yeah so there's a lot of um, costs involved um, the products that you buy so yeah I do earn much more from my aesthetic clinic but then I have costs as well that I have to take into account an aesthetic clinic I think is really good but also you have to have a market for it I think a lot of people um, just go and do an aesthetics course and then end up having no patients and it's because they a haven't gone to shadow anyone and get like a lot of experience because that's definitely what I did before I started my clinic I um, had a lot of patients to practice on prior um, and so had um, two whole years or was it two yeah two whole years of experience in aesthetics before we started our clinic so um, not to forget our degrees, medicine and dentistry for Seoul. So, you know, I think there's a lot, of, there's a lot of things that go into running a clinic and I think a lot of people kind of just go and do a course and think, yeah, I'm just going to have loads of clients run to me and it's not like that. Or people do a course and um, they're not aware that just because they've done a course, they might necess not necessarily have the correct knowledge to be doing aesthetics, which is very, very unfortunate. I've seen a lot of um, pages where they post, doctors are posting revisions of um, botched, Botch jobs, basically jobs that have been done by um, people who aren't medically qualified. And by medically qualified, I mean either a doctor, a dentist, um, or a nurse, registered nurse. These people have the most experience and education to inject something into your face or carry out any procedure on your face, on your hair, or any part of your skin. Um, so we, as medics and as dentists, study the anatomy of the face, um, including all the blood supply, the nerves, um, how deep we should go with our needles, where we should you know, be checking where there is a blood supply that's a lot more, or nerves that pass in particular, um, and going on a aesthetic course um, yes they give you the theory of it but they don't actually test any of your knowledge on it so someone could pretend to have read it but not actually know anything and then end up you know doing a lot of botch stuff so um, yeah I think that's one thing to you guys to be really really careful about is be careful and please 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 choose wisely your practitioner if you're having any sort of aesthetic procedure please make sure that your person you're going to is a doctor a dentist or a registered nurse because they actually know the science don't get me wrong anyone could kind of make a mistake or or someone can have a side effect to or a reaction to a procedure but um, something like 90% of um, cosmetic errors that happen in aesthetics clinics are people who are not medically trained. So please, please, please choose your practitioner wisely. Someone said, what's been your best date? Ah. You know what's hard is like, you know when you date someone recently, you can only think of like the dates you've had with them and then like you forget about the past. Mm. I had a really good date where um, the person I went on a date with cooked for me um, and I thought that was really really sweet because no guy has ever cooked for me and the food was really good and I just I actually believe it or not but loads of that's the thing is I think like loads of guys who asked me out think that I want something really bougie or like want to take me somewhere really fancy which is really sweet and I love that they want to impress me or um, you know they maybe like look at my socials and they see where I get up to go to or get up to or whatever and that's fine but actually it's like the wholesome little stuff that I love like another date that I went on we basically like went it, we went out but then at the end of the day we literally walked around central for like an hour and a half I remember I was in heels and I was just so engaged in this conversation we were having and just walking through the city at night time that I didn't even realise that I was like in heels until I was like, oh, we should go home. And I was like, shit, like my feet are hurting. But like, that's the sign of like a good day. It's usually the ones that are unplanned or the effort's a lot more different. I don't know how to explain it, but it's not like, I get like, I, it's so nice, don't go wrong. It's really nice when someone wants to take you somewhere fancy because, you know, at the end of the day, they've worked hard for their money and they want to take you somewhere where they're going to be spending a lot of that hard-earned money on you, which shows kind of 
how they value you and I appreciate that but sometimes it is the really like simple stuff or um for example when a guy gets my favorite flowers I love that like there's nothing I love more if you're wondering what my favorite flowers are they're baby pink roses and yes anyone is welcome to send me baby pink roses <laughs> I'm joking okay next question i feel like i talk too much on these questions you guys are gonna piss, like gonna get pissed off with me someone said do you want children yes i definitely want children i would like to ideally have four children um and i would ideally like to be married before i have my kids and i would like to be with my husband future husband whether even it's before or after marriage doesn't matter but like overall i think we need to have been together for at least like a couple of years, just so that we kind of get the balance of uh, when we do have kids, who's gonna play what role, who's gonna be good cop, who's gonna be bad cop, and just seeing what they're like as a parent. Um, so I think that's important. But yeah, I do want children. It has to be with the right person. It has to be at the right time. I can't tell you guys when that time will be. I think only God knows. And I look forward to that day. I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon, I'll be honest with you. Um, like in the immediate future but in the next few years I think obviously I'm 25 now and I think that's so young I have friends who are 25 and single and dating like me and then I have friends who are 25 and engaged and getting married so you know I think it's really down to you and what you want in your life and you can't base it on on your age or timing like it's literally when god wants for you and when you want for yourself as well someone said seppi how's your hair do you recommend it and someone else said where did you get your hair done i love it thank you so much so my hair is balayaged um it really like shows up different in different lights like now it just looks really brown sometimes it looks super blonde um now the toners come out a bit more you can see it but it's mainly face framing which I love. Um, and I got it done at Daniel Galvin, um, the one, the flagship in Marleybone, and I'd done it with Hair by Rosie. And I was so scared. The main thing I was scared about is that the texture of my hair and the quality of my hair would change. But thank God, none of that's happened. I tried using Olaplex shampoo after, and guys, literally, I had the worst reaction to it. It's made my scalp so itchy and dry. So I've stopped using that. I've just gone back to my regular um, shampoo and conditioner, which is so much better. My hair has not changed in quality or texture or anything. It's still healthy. She done an incredible job. And I don't think I will dye the, the balayage again. I think I'm just going to continue with face framing until it kind of grows out. And I'm just going to keep my natural colour because I like being um, bronze, but I don't wouldn't want to be um, blonde blonde. Um, I'm not sure it would suit my complexion unless I'm super tanned. Someone goes, what's your favourite colour? It is pink. I freaking love pink. Someone said, how do you always stay so content and happy? You seem like you look at the glass half full. So I'm going to make this the last question, but it's such an important one. I feel like it's first of all important to say that I'm not always happy, but I definitely always try my best to, if I feel down, flip the switch straight away or put myself into a good mood or distract myself and go out with my friends um, to get myself out of this bad mood. Um, bad moods usually come about from kind of something external it's never really something internal and that's why I use something external to kind of rapidly get rid of it um, my inner peace really comes from kind of taking time with myself and being alone with my thoughts and I have a manifestation and guided journal that I write every well not every day I don't want to lie to you guys but I try and write in it every single day usually I write it about three four times a week and it keeps me centered and balanced and happy um, in general though, I think I'm just quite like a bubbly, sociable, outgoing person and I try my best to kind of see the best in everything um, and it's come from a lot of books that I've read um, which basically is like the power of positive thinking, um, the law of attraction, the secret, um, there's so many incredible books out there and all of them basically boil down to it's up to you how you look at life and if your life is good or not. Um, so whether you think you can or think you can't, you are right. Think about that one for a second. It's saying it's all down to your own belief. So if you think you will succeed, 
um, then you're correct. And if you don't think you will succeed, then you're also correct because it's all about your own mindset. So whenever I feel down, I try, I literally repeat that same sentence myself and I tell myself, no, you're going to be happy and I get about with my day. But other good things that are easy to do to keep you happy are exercising, cutting out toxic people. I do this very, very easily. I don't have time for anyone who is toxic or negative. Um, if they want to come back into my life and they've changed their energy, that is fine. That's happened and I'm happy with that. But cut out toxic people, eat good you deserve the best, you deserve to treat your body like a temple, have fun, live your best life, don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything, um, and yeah, then I think you'll be happy. That's, that's literally all I can think to advise, but trust me, it works. So I'm gonna end this video here. I hope that you guys have enjoyed. I know I rambled a bit, but I just wanted to kind of answer some of the juicy gossip questions, because why not? I know that like I'm curious about like the influences that I follow personal life a bit. Um, so here was a bit of TMI for you guys. If you liked videos like this or want me to film any other video other than my usual vlogs, let me know because I'm always down to do new stuff. I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.